Halftime, California out in front of Utah by a score of 20 to nothing. Mike Pulaski and I are up here in the booth, and we have the pleasure of being joined by maybe the greatest quarterback in the history of Utah football, the Cupper, Lee Gross Cup with us here at halftime. And I know you do a lot of television work and radio work around here, but it has to be neat for you to see Cal playing your team, Utah, in a conference matchup. Well, first of all, let me say I'm honored to be your guest. Thank oh, you for asking me. <laughs> and as I just pointed out to Mike, I'm wearing the Cal colors, but there's just a hint of red in my uh, pocket patch. And so I'm glad Joe Cap isn't here, or I'd be in big trouble. He'd, he'd probably tear it up. He's just a couple doors down, but yeah. for the people back in Utah, you started off obviously a huge, great player, played for years, a few years in the NFL, and now you're back working with the Cal broadcast, right? I have been with Cal off and on now since 1986, and I got to cover you for two years, and uh, maybe my favorite two years as a Cal announcer is when you were the quarterback for Bruce Snyder. I appreciate that. Now, we talk about Utah football. You were under Texas Jack Curtis, and he invented a certain pass that every time I see it, I have to pop my friend Lee Gross Cup. You guys invented the shovel pass, didn't you? Texas Jack Curtis was the modern architect of the shovel pass. Before that, it had been used by Pop Warner, Newt Rockney, but I was the lucky quarterback that made it famous in 1957 because we used it so successfully against Army that two weeks later, Navy stole the play, and the announcers referred to it as the, the shovel pass, the Utah pass, or the Gross Cup pass. So I was just the fortunate quarterback that helped to make it famous against Army in 1957. Now, Cupper, we always see in Sunday night football when it gets displayed in the NFL, your good friend Al Michaels always pays homage to you. When we see the shovel pass, what is the key to a good shovel pass? Well, the shovel pass is really it has the elements of the draw play, but the way I threw it, it was really kind of a push pass. So the nice thing is if the ball is dropped, it's an incomplete pass and not a fumble. So the way we used it too, there was a lateral attached to it. So it was really kind of a shovel option. And uh, it was a play that everybody seemed to love at Utah. And now it's, it's a staple. I mean, everyone in the country has some form of the shovel pass but it really became famous in 1957 under Cactus Jack Curtis. The Utes now in the Pac-12. What does it mean, do you think, for the Utah school and the community to be in a BCS conference and to be a part of what was the Pac-10 and now the Pac-12? You know, I'm happy for Utah to be in the Pac-10. The first thing that Kyle Whittingham said when they asked him about it was that now he can compete in the BCS every year and have a chance to try for a national championship. Utah has had two undefeated seasons since 04, Urban Meyer 12 and 0, and then Kyle Whittingham 13 and 0. So this is a great thing for the University of Utah to be a member of the Pac-12 conference. You're a Heisman historian. Who do you like right now? Who is your front runner in the Heisman race? Right now, I would say Andrew Luck, number one. And uh, my, a guy I really like is RG3 out of Baylor, <laughs> Robert Griffin III. And uh, if I had to go with a third one, it would be Kellen Moore. But I think right now, Andrew Luck is the clear favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Once and always a quarterback, huh? Always a quarterback. Well, you got to stay at home in that position, Cup. Thank you very sure. much. A pleasure hey. to have you up here in the booth with us today. Once again, I'm honored to be your guest. Thank you. Lee Gross Cup, the former youth quarterback, joining us here at half of halftime. The cable car ride in San Francisco and the Bears riding high over Utah.